Week six, wide receiver tiers and rankings. These are your top four. Tyreek Hill against the Carolina Panthers. Cooper Cup against the Arizona Cardinals. Stefan Diggs against the New York Giants. Hayden, all these guys are at home because this ends with Jamar Chase against the Seattle Seahawks. Why don't we kick it off at the top with Tyreek Hill ranked as your number one wide receiver this week and 86 and a half receiving yards projection in the pick lobby. Yeah, he's going to be an absolute stud. I think if there is a trickle down with Devon Achan out of the picture, maybe they pass the ball even more. Not that Tyreek Hill needs it, of, of course. Right. And since teams have controlled the game so much against the Carolina Panthers this season, they have faced the second few get, fewest targets per game to opposing wide receivers at yeah. just 15. I think no matter what the script is, Tyreek Hill gets home. That is something to consider when we get down to Jalen Waddle, who's going to be in the next here for you. Um, on Cooper Cup real quick. We saw him come back to just an unbelievable performance, especially that first yeah. quarter. Arizona has allowed massive games the past two weeks. So Jamar Chase, 15, 192 and three. And Brent Ayuk at six and 148. We talked about it in the quarterback ranking show too. This is a passive defense. And when you can't get pressure on Matthew Stafford, he's going to pick you apart. Yeah. And then they're they're starting a six round rookie corner on the outside. He's been bad according to PFF. And then Marco Wilson, their number one corner, has allowed the most receiving yards in the NFL. So this is a total smash spot. The Rams are projected for the fourth most points in the entire league this week. And last week with Cooper Cut back, they had their highest neutral pass rate of the season. So everything's coming together. And that's why we'll get to Puka in just a second. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk about Stefan Diggs at all. Just a quick word on Jamar Chase. T. Higgins sounds like he is going to play this week. So, again, the 15 receptions on whatever it was, 19 targets last week. Right. Chase doesn't get fed as much when mm -hmm. T. Higgins is in the lineup. And I'm actually interested to see how the Seattle Seahawks unveil their defensive back grouping. Because, again, I think Jamal Adams played like nine snaps yeah. until he got that concussion. He is going to be back. We know that Devin Witherspoon was a nightmare in the slot for opposing offenses. But I wonder if they kick him outside with Tariq mm -hmm. Woolen, and that's how they unleash their, you know, cornerback grouping in this game. Seahawks have been shredded recently. I don't think for the rest of the season, those really bad stats will stay true just because we're getting Witherspoon and Adams back. Only note on Steph Diggs, I asked my dad, who I'm, I'm with right now in the Colorado River, I said, give me a player that's going to go crazy this week for the show. He picks Steph Diggs. There it is. <laughs> listen to, he knows balls. Listen to Pops. Okay. We'll start with uh, the fifth and sixth wide receivers for you. They're in the same game. That is CeeDee Lamb against the Chargers and obviously Keenan Allen against the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, so starting with CeeDee Lamb, things have just gone completely sideways for all of the skill players. This week, total get right spot. Seems like the Chargers are going to be without Joey Bosa. He doesn't practice leading into Monday Night Football. The Chargers have been the worst offense against fantasy wide receivers. They just traded away JC Jackson, who wasn't honestly helping the situation at all but if we can get a normal game and it's right. two point spread right now and the cowboys have the fifth highest team total of the week cd lamb completely balls out so i think this is a get right spot for cd lamb who's been like fine but has not lived up to like the round one two uh consideration i think this is the perfect spot for him to get all the way up uh into the top five yeah just quickly with cd lamb we talked about in the quarterbacks tier show and i know more people watch this one than that one um in the second half of in the second halves this season, let's put it that way, Dallas has run zero offensive plays with the score within seven points in either direction. That is one of the most ludicrous numbers that I've seen through the first five mm -hmm. weeks of an NFL season so far. Okay, on the flip side, Keen Allen attached to Kellen Moore, the previous play caller against for this Dallas Cowboys team, um, going against, obviously, a longtime defensive coordinator on that staff. Would you put any wisdom into the fact that Kellen Moore will know how to cut through a Dan Quinn defense. I'm not sure. I don't think the Chargers have many choices, though, because the offense has been going through Keenan Allen, obviously with uh, Austin Eckler back. That's going to even things out. Only downside right now for Keenan Allen, because the volume is beyond elite. The production is awesome as well, is teams facing the Cowboys on offense have the uh, highest neutral run rate in the NFL. And we've seen Kellen Moore go back and forth uh, with going pass heavy and then run heavy. So maybe it's a little bit more of a balanced approach. But to me, that's a problem more for Quinton Johnston, the tight ends, and Josh Palmer, and less so about Keenan Allen. 
Puka Nakua is your wide receiver seven this week. Again, against that same Arizona Cardinals defense. I think the question of if they can coexist was quickly answered. Yep. I do feel like this might be even more of a Puka week than it was last week. Again, we Ooh. talked about this Cardinals passive defense. Arizona is playing man coverage 18% of defensive snaps. That is 25th in the league. And we know that Puka Nakua, like we talked about against the Indianapolis Colts, he feasts against zone coverage. Yeah, and then last week, 30% target share. That'll get the job done. 13.7 expected half PPR points. And the coverage has just been completely cakewalked for Puka. And that's why I have Matthew Stafford was my quarterback six in rankings. Uh, I love both these guys. Wide receiver eight for you. I'm on Ross St. Brown at the yep. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this is, again, we get him back in our lives. Uh, and this is an offense that... While Tampa has some players, Ben Johnson and company, I think will be immediately able to reincorporate Amon Ross St. Brown into this offense. And they'll probably just throw more often too. Yeah, that's probably the big takeaway. Uh, offense is facing the Bucs, have the third highest neutral pass rate in the NFL. The Bucs, to me, are like mediocre everywhere on defense. Amon Ross St. Brown's at least practicing going into this week. Um, so assuming he gets in a full practice uh, on Friday, we should be good to go against the Bucks. The, the Lions project for only 23 and a half points which is a little bit less than they typically are, but it's more than enough for Amon Ross St. Brown to get going, especially if Sam Laporta is not going to play. He's now on the injury report right. with a calf injury. That would just open up even more targets for Amon Ross. Okay, I think people in the comments, we love you. You love us most of the time. We'll get very <laughs> mad at you for having A.J. Brown as your wide receiver nine against the New York Jets. It's just some fear of sauce Gardner and just this Jets defense as a whole, because what we've seen for the last three weeks of AJ yeah. Brown, just to remind you, Hayden mm -hmm. Winks, uh, nine catches, 131 yards, nine catches, 175 yards in two scores, and then six catches, 127 yards. Yeah, he is a very good player. I will say, uh, <laughs> but sauce Gardner. And I think mo more importantly, it's, do you trust the Jets offense to keep pace? Because if this, goes into, well, Derek Swift just took 12 carries in a row in the fourth quarter. That's where A.J. Brown can kind of not be himself in terms of volume. There's squeaky wheel with Devontae Smith, who definitely needs some more targets here. So I love A.J. Brown. Uh, I think he'll be fine against Sauce Gardner, but I think it's just like overall play volume against the Jets. And then the Pick'em Lobby, the Deer Pick'em Lobby, under fantasy promo code, the show, they only have his higher lower in receiving yards at 64 and a half which is lower than a bunch of the receivers we just got to. So you disagree with me, use promo code the show and get over on underdog. I'll take the higher on that. I understand that the Jets have not allowed a touchdown to outside wide receivers this year. Obviously, A.J. Brown spends about 80% of his time outside, but they don't move their corners. So mm -hmm. Sauce Gardner, well, when both are healthy, let's put it that way. So Sauce Gardner will stick to one side, D.J. Reader will stick to the other. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm, I'm still in on A.J. Brown, but let's say they don't move theirs and they want to, you know, move away from sauce, then boom, this might be a better Devontae Smith week. We'll get to that in a moment. Which which players should AJ Brown be ranked ahead of? Um <laughs> this is the hard part about doing rank. Someone's got to go down. Everybody just wants players up and up and up. Nobody ever tells me to move them down. Uh I'll, I'll put them one spot ahead of Amon Rossi Brown. Let's put it that that's way. fair. That's fair, fair enough. Okay. Devontae Adams close out your top 10. This is against the New England Patriots. Has not been a huge uh, last few weeks for Devontae Adams, especially this past week. The fewest number of targets that he has seen in a game since week two of the 2020 season. Yeah, and I think it coincides with this shoulder injury. And even this week, DNP limited to start the week. In practice, he's already admitted that it is an actual issue. Uh, turns out your shoulder is pretty important for playing wide receiver in the NFL. Patriots are missing all three of their starting corners. At the same time, Bill Belichick's philosophy for three decades has been double the number one player and then make the number two beat you. So I'm still factoring that in, even if Christian Gonzalez and the rest of these guys are on injured reserve. So Devontae Adams, I have him ranked a little bit lower than I otherwise would, um, especially coming off of the last week's season lows in basically every single usage category. Still more than capable of blowing up, just the doubling, the injury, just that game in general, like, Raiders Patriots like I'm worried about that game Satan just in general there goes the top 10 I do want to remind you all that we do remove all of the Thursday night football wide receivers from this conversation uh, Hayden tries to and maybe less so this weekend since he's at the river um, 
update his rankings as news and everything filters in as well. So keep that in mind. You can find those in the description down below. Obviously, we have running back tiers and rankings already on the channel. We have that with quarterbacks and tight ends and defenses already on the channel. So hit that subscribe button and check out the other content. Okay, here we go. Tier two begins with Calvin Ridley. We talked about it on another show this week. This is two teams have already faced each other in week one. Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence went nuts. And a huge part of that is the single high. And in fact, the Colts played the most cover three in the NFL at 61% of their snaps. It's going to be isolated coverage for Calvin Ridley to feast on the outside for me. And that's with the MO of the DC for three decades as well. Um, Calvin Ridley already 101 yards and a touchdown, 34% target share in that week one game, absolutely feasted on him. And Zay Jones still not practicing, uh, most likely not going to play this week. So um, I love the higher on 56 and a half receiving yards oh, yeah. for Calvin Ridley. So uh, I don't care where the consensus rankings are. This is such a perfect matchup. We're starting to see it based off of last week. Everything about this screams Calvin Ridley downfield targets, and I love the way Trevor Lawrence has been playing. And it's at home this time, too. Uh, and yes, the Colts have added some corners and rookies and Juju Brent since that time. But as you outlined, as you said, this DC is not going to change anything of his philosophy. And so to me, we're going to get close to what we got in week one. It's funny that just, you know, a week or 10 days ago, people were so nervous about their Calvin Ridley shares. You shouldn't be. Okay. Jalen Waddle is your wide receiver 12. We already mentioned anything you want to add here again against this Carolina Panthers defense. I think this is officially the spot to buy Jalen Waddle. It's been really bad. And I just think that more volume could go his way without Devon Achan because it's kind of getting players into space. And I think that Jalen Waddle can they get him in the screen game a little bit more. Also, major positive regression candidate based off of last week with all those end zone targets uh, turning into touchdowns for the other team somehow. Um, pick and lobby is at about 61 and a half receiving yards. And right now the dolphins are clearly number one in projected points above 30 points, which is fairly rare. So I think it's the time to be getting Jalen Waddle. If you can in the trade markets, I will say Jalen Waddle's usage and his production has not matched where he's historically ranked over the right. last couple months. But I do think this is a spot where I will pick my battles and rank Jalen Waddle fairly high. Yeah, a stupid four end zone targets last week on nine total targets that I don't think is going to happen again. But like you said, it does mean some regression to the mean positively for him. Which is rare uh, for him. It is. Usually it's, it's the other rare. way. Okay, another wide receiver in this game is next for you at wide receiver 13. Well ahead of consensus. Yeah, I know. Got to do it. It's Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen as wide receiver 13. Hayden, again, I want to reiterate the consensus ranking is at wide receiver 17 this week. That's from 100 other analysts. Yeah. Uh, he is tied for eighth among wideouts and targets this year at 46. And he is fourth at the position in overall routes run at 207. Yeah, they just have no choice but to get him the ball right now. Why not uh, build the entire boat around Adam Thielen? You know, what could go wrong when you're the Panthers offense? Titanic, that is. Uh, Panthers are third in the most uh, fantasy usage expected half PPR points. And a lot of it's going to Adam. Th I don't like being ranked ranking him higher than this, but they are 13 and a half point dogs. The garbage time will be there for Adam Thielen again. It was functional last week. It was functional. And he's been the wide receiver nine on wide receiver seven usage over the last month. So, I mean, as long as he keeps copy pasting what he has been doing, um, you have to rank him really high. I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, and actually the Dolphins have been susceptible to slot work so far this year. He's playing 67% of the snaps in the slot. That's obvious if you're watching the Panthers. Yeah. And where Miami, they've allowed 8.1 yards per target to opposing slot wide receivers and 82% catch rate to opposing wide receivers. I mean, 82% of Adam Thielen's targets, if he catches those in yeah. this game, uh, it's going to be a good week. And usually defense coordinators want to take away the number one wide receiver, but I think most DCs <laughs> are like, we'll take the Adam Thielen underneath routes. Uh, you can have those. Okay, Michael Pittman is your wide receiver 14. This is now in connection to Gardner Minshew. Uh, mm -hmm. With Gardner Minshew under center this season, Michael Pittman leads the team with 30.4% of the targets. And 34% first read target share as well, which is top 12 in on the year. Um, that's according to our friend Denny Carter. Um, 41 first read targets is actually 7th. Uh, among wide receivers. So I think that Gardner Minshew will be good for Michael Pittman. I think they're going to pass the ball just a little bit more. Um, lots of underneath throws for Michael Pittman this year. So 
I think the target volume will be there. And underdog pick and lobby, 60 and a half receiving yards, yeah. which is borderline wide receiver one, two stuff. And I think Michael Pym is like a really good player. Oh, I think he's really good too. Unfortunately, I think it's going to go back to kind of the similar usage that we got with Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, Nick Foles. Mitch and, is better than all those guys. No, he is, but his air yards per target on those targets with Garner Minshew's at just 5.7 yards. Right. And that's different than, you know, mm -hmm. where after the first game and a half, Anthony Richardson started targeting him. So it's going to yep. be shorter. Like, again, I think that pulls everything closer to the line of scrimmage when Minshew yep. is the quarterback. DJ Moore is your wide receiver 15. This is against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I mean, I was nervous about DJ Moore. I think everyone was early on. But in the last four games, he either has 100 yards or a touchdown. He's a wide receiver one over the last month on wide receiver 26 usage. How he's been getting it done is lots of yards after the catch against really bad corners in isolation. The good news is, even though he's a negative regression candidate, the Vikings live in isolation because they blitz so much and i don't like their corner so this could be fairly similar to the commander's game as long as like what we talked about justin fields can actually handle the pressure that the vikings bring because historically justin fields is really bad against pressure he will face a bunch of it right now but at the same time dj moore is toasting these guys in isolation so definitely a boom bust player i'm not completely chasing the spike weeks that he's had recently because that was some of the, literally the worst cornerback play I've ever seen. But DJ Moore's explosiveness has been a win for the Bears, certainly. We know that the Vikings blitz at the highest rate. This is courtesy of Rich Rebar, sharp football, sharp football analysis. Again, the worksheet is the tool that I use the most out of anything out there. This is a great one. When Justin Fields yeah. has been blitzed, DJ Moore is averaging 3.9 yards per route run and has received a team high 25% of the team target. So it makes sense that, hey, when Justin Fields knows that I'm going to get isolated coverage or get heated right. up, I'm going to go to the guy that we traded out of the number one pick for. Big difference between DJ Moore and Darnell <laughs> Mooney on, on tape. Yes, yes, I think so. And definitely this past week where that connection with Fields and Mooney just wasn't aligned, even though he mm -hmm. was open. Marquise Brown, Hollywood. Your wide receiver 16. This is at the Los Angeles Rams. He's been the wide receiver 16 on wide receiver 12 usage over the last month. I think without James Conner, that has a lot of trickle down effects because I don't think that uh, Imari Di Mercado or uh, Keontae Ingram are going to provide the same juice and physicality that this team likes to run with with James Conner. So I think they're actually going to pass the ball more. And on top of that, we talked about Puka and Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford loving their, their spot against this defense. So I think garbage time, and we talk about this, the Cardinals have functional garbage time because Dobbs has been playing well, and Marquise Brown, to me, has been playing some of the best ball of his entire career. It goes unnoticed because there's not a single beat reporter uh, that covers the Cardinals for some reason. I don't know why that is the case, but uh, pick and lobby, pass usage, pass production, game script, individual matchups, everything's clicking uh, for Marquise Brown right now. Yeah, he has a sixth highest target share over the last... Three weeks, four weeks uh, across the NFL. Okay, Christian Kirk, you talked about Zay Jones is probably going to be out of this game. And when Zay Jones has been out, Christian Kirk has been better. I will point, though, back to week one. Again, that's when Zay Jones did play. Mm -hmm. And if we are attacking vertically, that might mean a bit less Christian Kirk, especially if it's going to be single high or cover three. There's going to be more people in the area of the first 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I agree. Um, Christian Kirk can win deep though he has done that in the past um and he, he, he even last year he was winning deep on some routes too but ultimately he's back in two wide receiver sets and i think that his cold secondary is beatable everywhere um he's been the wide receiver 14 in usage with zay jones in and out of the lineup so this is actually a good spot i think that some people would actually rank christian kirk even higher than this and i honestly don't blame him this is kind of like a flat tier to me after we like kind of got into that uh, jalen waddle discussion jacoby myers revenge game and i'll Add it like it actually is a revenge game, I think, yes. because they chose Juju Smith Schuster ahead of him. They gave Juju Smith Schuster more guaranteed money. It was the exact same numbers and contract again, except for the guarantees. And now Jacoby Myers is balling, and Juju Smith Schuster, I think, might miss this game because of a concussion. Yeah, uh, again, this is the New England Patriots he's facing. Yeah, uh, revenge games going his way. Jacoby Myers also just been really strong every single time he's been out there. Actually, wide receiver 12 in usage throughout the entire year. Like I said, all the Patriots corners are banged up on IR with all three of them. If my theory comes true where Belichick tries to bracket Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers can win in isolation. Uh, so 
I love everything about this at home as well. Uh, the Raiders haven't been too special, but every single time we do stats versus film and I bring up my damn spreadsheets, there's only three players listed in that on this yeah. offense. It's only three guys right now, and one of them right now is injured. Okay, we've been waiting for it. We have it, not in the environment that we wanted because we loved when Jordan Addison was able to get favorable coverages opposite Justin Jefferson. That is not the case. He might have to be the guy now who dictates the wide receiver room. Uh, even if he's not playing the quote unquote X wide receiver spot for this team, uh, he yeah. does check in as the wide receiver 19 for you in a good matchup for him against the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I think that was a pretty key note that they're going to put KJ Osborne into the X receiver role. And I think that's just like smart coaching because Jordan Addison, when we did this tape breakdown, He's been fairly good against man coverage, but it's a lot of these like kind of deeper routes and he can get, you know, trail on Burks where you're getting hands on them. So they're keeping him off the line of scrimmage. I think it's just a sign of good coaching and letting Jordan Addison get the more favorable matchups season high 14.9 expected half PPR points last week. Uh, he's been the wide receiver five in EPA per target. So the flashes have been there and both KJ Osborne and uh, Justin Jefferson have both been top 10 in routes. I think there's a chance that Jordan Addison finishes like the wide receiver five or six in routes this week. And it's hard to fail when your quarterback is Kirk Cousins because Kirk Cousins, nobody wants to admit it's actually good at throwing the football. Out of a bye, DK Metcalf checks in as your wide receiver 20. He's on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals. Tyler Lockett is even further down the list here. Yeah. Um, it feels weird to wait until wide receiver 20 for DK Metcalf, but I understand it so far because we haven't gotten – massive, let's say, fantasy top-tier play when it yeah. comes to Geno Smith to both of these wide receivers. Yeah, there's some positive indications, though. Um, coming off the bye, the rib injury for DK Metcalf, if that was uh, holding him back in any way, that should be better. They also got Charles Cross back into a full participant last Huge. week. That's their left tackle. Really good player. Big deal for both Geno Smith, who I moved up in my quarterback rankings after that news, and for DK Metcalf, who needs to win down the field. Uh, Sumer Sports, Tej Seth, he had this note. The Seahawks have been the best team in the league out of 12 personnel this season. Yep. The Bengals defense have been 29th best at defending 12 personnel looks. And their number one corner, Chidubi Awuzie, he's been dealing with a back injury, kind of a limited participant, kind of a wait and see if he's actually going to be playing in this game. If he's out, this should be single high looks on the perimeter for DK Metcalf now with actually time to wait. So, the usage just doesn't indicate the usage is so far below this ranking that's hard for me yeah. to pull them all the way up. But like it's very easy to envision DK Metcalf finishing with 100 yards and a touchdown here. Right. We only have four games and we've seen other players struggle those first four games that have a great fifth. Um, the point on the 12 personnel to tight in usage, which is what Seattle lived in last year for long periods of time. Yeah. Uh, it is why you don't have Jason as a top 44 wide receiver this week, even coming out of a bye week. And it's also Shane Waldron is having a ton of fun creating cool play calls mm -hmm. out of 12 personnel, getting both as fullbacks into the backfield, splitting out Noah Fant at times. We saw yep. Noah Fant look super athletic for like the second time in his Finally. NFL career. So I'm kind of with you. That might be where this team lives. And if they are a 11 personnel team from now moving forward, yeah. I'll be a bit stunned by that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. that Shane Waldron likes to play Army football for about eight plays a game, and honestly, I respect the bit. It's actually been working. We're getting uh, some some views off of it, thanks to you. This is where I have the biggest disagreement with you oh because boy. it's your start of the Tier 3. Wide receiver 21 is Debo Samuel, and I'm going to include this with Brandon Ayuk, who is your wide receiver 31. Wide mm -hmm. receiver 31, Hayden, by the way, and yep. I don't, you know, Go to consensus rankings for everything, but I believe consensus rankings has Brandon Ayuk as the wide receiver 13 this week. I'm a bit nervous that your spreadsheets are letting you down here because okay. I understand that the Browns defense so far this season has been outstanding, right? Yes. They have, though, played uh, Joe Burrow in week one, who was broken. Then they played Kenny Pickett. Mm -hmm. Then they played the Tennessee Titans. And then they got destroyed 28 to three against the Baltimore Ravens. And I think that there is an important note, 28 to three against the Ravens, bad quarterback play also gives advantage in, in uh, field position to the opposing offense. I guess my main point here is the brand new ranking because the Browns play the most man coverage in the NFL, 38% of the snaps. 
Mm -hmm. Brandon Ayuk is the one who can dominate man coverage in this game. I understand it's Denzel Ward, but part of me wants to put Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, and Brandon Ayuk ahead of one corner that we should slightly be worried about. Yeah. I got good news for you. You're going to love the pick'em lobby then because yep. Brandon Ayuk's projections out like at 42 and a half yards, which is kind of where uh, this is. So by all means, go use promo code the show, sign up for $100, take it out of your own bank account and play some hires on Brandon Ayuk. Um, I just think that there's some win factors. I have Debo ranked higher than Ayuk because Debo's off the injury report. If you are getting a lot of pressure from Miles Garrett and company, and if Denzel Ward is on Brandon Ayuk, I think that they might scheme up Debo Samuel a little bit more in a closer game like this one, especially if there is some uh, wind concerns as well. I was actually kind of surprised to see how high the consensus rankings are because the 49ers are projected for way fewer points than normal, only 22 points on the road, West Coast to East Coast, good defense. And I think it's just not like a good defense because they face bad offenses. Like certainly that helps. Like I, they have star players everywhere and a good defensive coordinator and they want to play slow. So I'm a little bit worried that this can be a very Christian McCaffrey focused. Um, and like we've always said, like one or two of these wide receivers or tight ends fail. And it's hard because one of these guys will likely go off. Right. Um, but the baseline, I think, is just like much lower than people want to give credit for. Yeah. And I mean, with Ayuk this season, we have a 29 point game then a 5.8. Then he missed a game then 17.8. Mm -hmm. and 7.8 right so yeah. to me though he like he has ascended talent wise i agree he has and so i know that his target share might be lower his total targets might be lower and mm -hmm. all that stuff and also understand that the browns have only allowed one wide receiver to finish higher than wide receiver 44 and that was when george pickens you know caught that 71 yarder across the middle and ran it for a score i just uh i hate seeing brand Ayuk at because there's like some names and iffy situations that we'll get into in mm -hmm. between there. And so to me, it's why would you rank a certifiably good wide receiver in a good offense below some like teams and bad offenses attached to bad quarterbacks as well? But let's get into this. Okay, yep, let's do it. Okay, your wide receiver 22 is Devontae Smith. We kind of talked about with AJ Brown. This is against the New York Jets uh, and his pick and projections at 51 and a half. Yeah, he's been the wide receiver at 19 per game going back to 2022, and he's the wide receiver 58 in usage over the last month. I think there's a little bit of squeaky wheel. We saw it with Dallas Goddard last week, but the Jets have been the second best defense against fantasy wide receivers. I think Sauce Gardner is part of that. I think that the Jets' anemic offense plays into that as well. So Devonta Smith's going to have to earn this, um, but he is really talented. So uh, I, I guess you can make a very similar argument to like what I'm doing with um, Brandon Ayuk. It's just that Devontae Smith over a longer period of time has been outproducing Ayuk. Well, and again, if the team wants to avoid Sauce Gardner as well, then whoever is on him, the other wide receiver plus tight end, uh, could have a more advantageous matchup mm -hmm. since, again, they don't flip sides. Okay, Mike Evans is actually your wide receiver 23 here. Welcome back. Coming out of a bye, he actually missed practice on Wednesday. But just as we were about to hit record, head coach came out said that Mike Evans is a full go for Sunday now against the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I'm mostly uh, believing in that. Uh, Mike Evans has like returned from injuries faster than most players, and that's why he's, you know, a thousand yards per season type of player. Um, I think it's a totally fine matchup at home. Hopefully the Lions could really push the pace here. Mike Evans has separated from Chris Godwin on tape when healthy. If Mike Evans was fully healthy, I'd rank him even higher than this. So I'm kind of just hedging a little bit because he didn't like literally not practice on Wednesday coming off the bye. Most likely a veteran day, but um, it is something to consider whenever we're dealing with like a hamstring injury. Nico Collins here against the New Orleans Saints is your wide receiver 24. Um, I don't believe Tank Dell is going to play after suffering that concussion. And the Saints defense has some bullies. Let's put it that way. Yeah, Marshawn Lattimore has been pretty solid um, as a team. The Saints have been the 11th best against fantasy wide receivers. I do think that no tank tank Dell does matter for Nico Collins. Um, and Nico Collins, I just think is really good. And CJ Stroud has been absolutely dominant. Yep. And that's with the Texans literally having the, the lowest neutral pass rate yep. in the NFL, maybe against the saints off a uh, defensive line. They say enough already with that. Let's try to air this thing out. Cause CJ Stroud kind of deserves that in my opinion. So that would certainly help out Nico Collins. 
This might surprise you. You're actually ahead of consensus on Nico Collins. He's the uh, wide receiver 28. And just looking through here, like consensus rankings on fantasy pros, again, 100 plus analysts, they bring in their half point PPR rankings. They have Jacoby Myers as wide receiver 30 all the way down there. Yeah. So uh, there are some big differences here. Some good pivot points for the people out there. Uh, and one of those is Gabe Davis as your wide receiver 25. Oh, yes. I mean, for some reason, the public does not want to rank Gabe Davis any higher than wide receiver 34 because they shake in their boots and believe this is the week he's not going to work. Uh, Hayden, he's worked every single week this season. He's, he's the same exact player <laughs> attached to an awesome quarterback, and they are supposed to dominate the New York Giants defense with a blitzing defensive coordinator. And that means, hey, we can throw it deep or we can throw it against single coverage and look at Gabe Davis. Complete eruption spot for all the reasons you just listed. On top of that, two rookie corners on the perimeter. The Giants have been 28th against 12 personnel offenses, according to Sumer Sports as well. So everything here, nobody wants to admit it, but Gabe Davis, when he's been healthy, has been really good. In fact, I look back at it. If you remove the games where he was on the injury report last year, he's been like a, the wide receiver 16 Yeah, for like two years. He's so the wide receiver 17 this season. Yeah. In I'm insulted game. by my own ranking here and I'm way <laughs> ahead of consensus. I, yeah, I, I think people were just bitten last year by how they were drafting him as like the wide receiver 14 overall. And he didn't pan out for tons of reasons that we outlined in stats versus film every single week yeah. that he was injured and things were just going horribly wrong. And this year, everything is going right. Yes. And he's playing well. It's Josh that Allen's been a freak, a freak. Okay. There's your wide receiver 25. That means wide receiver 26 is DeAndre Hopkins against this Baltimore Ravens defense. Hayden, we don't love to attack this Ravens defense, albeit no. last week. George Pickens put one on Marlon Humphrey, who returned to the lineup. And Pickens and Humphrey have somewhat similar playing styles. Yeah, I didn't think that Marlon Humphrey was moving at the same speed as he typically does. Not a surprise coming off that foot injury. Still on the injury report. Uh, a lot of respect for Baltimore, but... DeAndre Hopkins in his three healthy games is averaging 13.2 expected half PPR points. No trail on Burks again. Uh, I'm worried about the play volume in general here, but DeAndre Hopkins, I think like not the same player, but the ways he wins, he can still win in those ways. And I think Tan Hill is a fine enough quarterback to get him the ball. Pick him lobby. Very optimistic, actually 57 and a half receiving yards here. So a uh, tough matchup, maybe not as tough as we'd think because Marlon Humphrey right now isn't himself. Uh, better days are coming for him though, certainly. The Ravens have like had to move around some of their cornerbacks again because of injuries, but George Pickens again got them for six for 130 and one. Nico Collins for six for 80. Michael Pittman nine for 77. All those yeah. guys have size. All those guys can win contested. And yeah. that's where DeAndre Hopkins game is living at this moment. Certainly not after the catch. Chris Olave is your wide receiver 27, and I understand it over the last two weeks. Again, in fantasy points scored, Chris Olave has 0.4 and uh, 8.2. And consensus rankings have Chris Olave, though, all the way up as wide receiver 14 this week. Hayden, here's a stat for you. Mm -hmm. He has 246 air yards in the past two weeks, but just 16 actual yards. And a lot of that is... Deep shots that aren't connecting and they're highly volatile, but that is what Chris Olave is doing in this offense right now. He's missed a couple near touchdowns, but we've seen that his throughout his entire career, kind of like Terry McLaurin. And just going back, the same stat: half PPR wide receiver ranking since 2022 per game. Chris Olave is at the wide receiver 31, and that's him being a baller. So, like, this is just kind of where he has been. Um, he is positive regression candidate for the reasons you, you mentioned, but at the same time. The Saints offense could go super conservative at times and offenses facing the Texans have ran the ball at the highest rate in the NFL. And I do slightly worry that the easy button for this offense and what, what's familiar to them is to just throw the ball, run the ball with Alvin Kamara. And I do wonder if Chris Olave is not going to get the same amount of targets as he otherwise would. It's a really good player. I want to love him like everybody else does. Yeah, but at some point we got to like refresh the actual production score and not the tape. I will to say, and we talked about this with Colt McCoy in this week's scheme. Desmond Ritter last week against this Texans defense, which destroyed Kenny Pickett the week before. Uh, Desmond Ritter went four for four on twenty plus yard throws last week for one hundred and fourteen right. yards. Now yeah. many of those were contested and not yards of the catch opportunities to go fully, but there were a lot of deep routes that he was hitting on and. 
they weren't like difficult throws other than some back shoulder stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he was just firing it in there. So I think that gives us a little more hope for Chris Olavi too. Because all he has to do is hit one of those. And he hits better than he has, obviously, the last two weeks. T. Higgins is coming up. But next is Zay Flowers. Uh, Zay Flowers, this is Tennessee Titans. This is a London game. His routes are expanding in terms of like the surface area of the field. And one note on that, Hayden, after averaging just 5.2 air yards per target in weeks one through three with just 12% as his deep target rate, yeah. he's now averaging 15 air yards per target with 27% of his routes uh, and deep targets happening in the past two games. Yeah, he's struggled on them, but it's actually optimistic that he's at least running more like traditional routes, more digs and stuff. You kind of see that on the next gen stats charts. He's been the wide receiver 24 in usage um, over the last month. To me, he's definitely the best Ravens wide receiver. Odell looks pretty, pretty much on the on the back nine and maybe the back one or two. Uh, and Rashad Bateman can't even get into the starting lineup at this point. And Titans for years have been the biggest pass funnel in the NFL. And we're seeing signs of that once again. So uh, Lamar Jackson is this close for 350 passing yards, three touchdowns. It could very easily be against Tennessee. And if their offensive line holds up against that Tennessee Titans defensive front, wide receiver ones against this Titans defensive backfield, seven receptions for 93 yards through five weeks on average. That'll work. Okay. T. Higgins is back as your wide receiver 29. At least he's back practicing. Talk to me. What are your expectations here? Uh, in an interview, he said that, quote, it's really just tolerating the pain. It's probably going to be like this for the rest of the season until I can heal up for months. So the NFL uses pain injections. Um, T. Higgins will certainly need one. He's been limited in practice. There is a uh, buy next week for them. So like yeah. it wouldn't be, I think, totally out of the question for them to hold back T. Higgins despite him yeah. practicing. Yeah, certainly that will have to refresh on Sunday morning. I'll keep the rankings updated even if I'm not on the show. Garrett Wilson is your wide receiver 30. Uh, this is like, these are the two names that I would have Brandon Ayuk ahead of at the very least are mm -hmm. Tiggins and Garrett Wilson. And I understand like Garrett Wilson, he's commanding 31.6 of the team's targets, right? 45.4% of the team's air yards, which like gives us an out and an opportunity for right. him to still be successful with Zach Wilson at quarterback. But now we're getting the Philadelphia Eagles defense. Well, that's kind of my point, though. The Eagles defensive line is so good that teams are just like basically giving up on even trying to run the ball against them. And in the secondary, they've had some issues. The Eagles are actually 29th against fantasy wide receivers. They've allowed seven different wide receivers to have at least 60 yards. So that's kind of like the threshold I'm hoping Garrett Wilson can get, especially if the Eagles offense gets clicking. You can see easy button throws to, to Garrett Wilson screens, that type of stuff. So not going to be pretty. Uh, we can move Brandon Ayuk up up ahead of T. Higgins. Why don't we do I'm that? Not, I'm not happier? trying to force you into anything. I'm just no, you know, I'm, I'm fine with mind. that. I'm fine with that. Okay. So let's do this and let's move T. Higgins down to here. Perfect. Your wide receiver 32 kicking off tier four. Uh, is it Josh Palmer? Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Josh Palmer here in the starting lineup. Josh Palmer off the bye week. Uh, Josh Palmer has been running a ton of routes this season. And I mean, having him here as a top 32 wide receiver means you believe he's locked into wide receiver three status on fantasy people's or fantasy football lineups. I should say. I'll call him a flex play, um, but in the, last, in the last 12 games, uh, trust me, you don't want him as your wide receiver three. You're not winning your league right. if Josh Palmer is your wide receiver three. If you can, if he is your flex. In the 12 games, uh, dating back to last year, where he's played 75% or more of the snaps, which is basically when Keenan Allen or Mike Williams was out, Josh Palmer's averaging five and a quarter receptions for 63 receiving yards. Is that a thing for Josh Palmer? Probably not. It's more of a Justin Herbert thing, but Justin Herbert is playing hell of football right now pick and lobby has him at 53 and a half receiving yards so it's not pretty with him he's going to be very inconsistent um but they have been connecting on some like deep throws that's what we saw actually to ice the game before the bye week yep. last week so not a huge fan of this but it's more of a bet on kellen moore and justin herbert tyler lockett next uh again this is against the cincinnati Bengals. tyler lockett has not reached 60 yards in a game this season Yards per out run last year, 1.9. Yards per out run this year, 1.3. It's a career low, 5.8 yards per target. So it's a kind of a chicken and the egg situation. It's Tyler Lockett, has he lost a step or is he a major positive regression candidate? Yeah, it gets it's, it's very early. hard. It gets very hard to 
uh, kind of distinguish between the two because he's a 31 year old. Um, I That's think it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that far behind, uh, but, and you feel uh, it every not... day when you wake up, I'm sure you're like, I'm almost at Tyra Lockett's age. Right. Uh, luckily they don't ask me to do sprints down the field right. against NFL corners. Cause that would not be going well for me. So I think there's something to monitor when you have Jackson Smith and Jigba in waiting, but I have JSN completely buried Tyra Lockett's still going to be the guy neutral matchup on the road. Fair enough points, but it's something to at least monitor with Tyler Lockett. Chris Godwin is next for you. Uh, I don't know if you have to go into detail because we already talked about Mike Evans. I will say he was in Mike Evans' spot. And then once Mike Evans is into the lineup, at least that's what we think right now, thanks to Todd Bowles, this moves Chris Godwin into here. Anything you want to add for his name? Uh, just a, a chart that I pulled up receiving touchdowns. Um, just looking at regression candidates. Chris Godwin's, DeAndre Hopkins, Zay Flowers, Michael Thomas, Robert Woods. A lot of the players that we've talking about right in this tier are positive regression, uh, regression candidates when it comes to touchdowns. So that's been a little bit of the difference uh, for Chris Godwin this year. Um, not the same player to me on tape. Drake London against the Washington Commanders defense, one that we just saw get torched last week against DJ Moore. Uh, again, we saw Drake London do quite well, um, not as well as Cal Pitts and everyone else, but made right. some important contested catches last week. And this commander's secondary, again, Stefan Diggs went 8 for 111. A.J. Brown, 9, 175, and 2. And we know D.J. Moore, 8, 230, and 3. Please, please, let's throw the ball against them. I dare them to put Emmanuel Forbes in Drake London. <laughs> Just the size-wise, I mean, Drake London well, is prone to moss some dudes. And I want to throw out that with Kyle Pitts, he is playing less in-line tight end this year than he ever has before. Mm -hmm. I think it's down to like 24% of his snaps versus it was at 36 and 32% over the last yeah. two years. I think that's like, it's the Johnny Smith factor. They yes. have like a traditional tight end. And, and Michael Lundin. Pruitt has played about 150 snaps in line this year too. It's going to be post, go, post, dig, go, post all day long against these corners. Sales. And they have the guys to get it done. Yeah. They have 33 more dropbacks this season than they did at this point a year ago. So that's like a small little advantage. That's mm -hmm. like we're getting there. We're getting there. Six extra dropbacks per game nearly. So we're getting okay. there. Michael Thomas, we talked about. I don't know if there's anything to say about Michael Thomas. I mean, he is yeah. Larry Fitzgerald reincarnated right now. Uh, body you, catch it, fall to the ground. Yeah. In theory, he's a positive regression candidate with the touchdowns. It's just one of these where you can see it where I'm saying that the entire season. And the reason why he's not actually paying off is because he is Larry Fitzgerald. Terry McLaurin continues on in this tier four. Um, I got to be honest, these commanders, wide receivers, and where they rank among all other wide receivers on percentages is why I hate the term earning targets because right. Terry McLaurin ranks 58th in target per route run. I'm sure Jahan Dotson's like at 75 yeah. among wide receivers. And that is not indicative to me of their talents. It is indicative of the quarterback and the routes they're being asked to run. And then Logan Thomas being the check down mm -hmm. behind them when they are running 25 plus yards down the field. Why throw the ball to Terry McLaurin when you have Logan Thomas? That's that's what the folks are asking. Uh, my big note here is just hat tip J. Terrell. Uh, opposing number one outside wide receivers this year. Adam Thielen, kind of outside, go with me here, 12 yards. Romeo Dobbs, 30 yards. Josh Reynolds, zero yards. Calvin Ridley, 38 yards. Nico Collins, 39 yards. Pick'em Lobby, 53 and a half yards. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, send that to Daigle, if you will, because he tries to keep arguing me every single Sunday of like how we shouldn't care about A.J. Terrell when he actually like shadows wide receivers yeah. versus uh, other corners who do not. And it's not just him. It's Jesse Bates. The pass, uh, yeah. the defensive tackles are playing better football this year. So like, I get it. Jesse Bates literally does something that other safeties do not every single week that yeah. he tries to mess with quarterbacks minds. Obviously against Bryce Young, we saw it in week one. And then CJ Stroud basically cited those Bryce Young interceptions as the reason yeah. that they ran this in and up with Dalton Schultz for like the game near the game winner, not the game winner, but close to it a couple weeks ago. Do they have Jesse Bates film in on the S2 test? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Uh, Robert Woods. Robert Woods, all the way up here as your wide receiver 38. It's just, just because someone's going to have to catch passes and Tank Dell's not in there. And, you know, R Robert Woods is near a full-time player in this offense. Yeah, he is. 12.5 uh, and 12.4 expected half PPR points in the games without Tank Dell. He's been the wide receiver 31 in usage. I'm not saying he will live up to those expectations 
because Robert Woods is more of a veteran for this this team. Noah Brown, though, is back off the injury report, practicing in full-time capacity. That is something to kind of monitor because he was supposed to be in the starting lineup here, but Pick'em Lobby has about 40 and a half receiving yards, more of a PPR scammer than like an upside play. But I guess you could do worse if you like have to start somebody like legitimately right off the waiver wire. KJ Osborne and Tutu Atwell close out your wide receiver 39 and wide receiver 40. I mean, going from your ex wide receiver is Justin Jefferson down to KJ Osborne, who can't move that well, is a big yeah. drop off. And then Tutu Atwell, we talked about it prior to last week. He was one of only four wide receivers to get eight targets in every single game. Last week, he had the fewest amount of targets he's seen all year. But again, this is an environment where I love mm -hmm. potentially all three of these pass catchers to get to because uh, the Cardinals are passive. Yes, completely agree. W with KJ Osborne, like this is one of my favorite stats. He's been the wide receiver of five in routes this year, but he's only the wide receiver 56 in actually fantasy usage because he just doesn't like earn targets. Like this is actually a way to use it. He's not earning targets. He's out there. And I think they're putting him in even a more difficult role. Uh, it's just a little bit harder for me to see it though. Last week, season high, 12 and a half expected half PPR points with Justin Jefferson hobbled. So uh, this is the tier where you like start to panic if these guys are yeah. starting. Uh, your wide receiver is 41 through 45 are actually some names that we like, mm -hmm. but ranking later on this week, Amari Cooper, Quentin Johnston, Josh Reynolds, Josh Downs, and, uh, and Brandon Cooks. Quickly with Amari, uh, PJ Walker is going to start. For the Browns, I think they might have the lowest projected points than we've seen this entire season. Do you know what it is? Like 13 and a quarter. 13 and a quarter, Josh. Yeah, what the hell is that? Um, we love Amari Cooper, but you just can't play it. And by the way, this Deshaun situation where two weeks Yikes. ago, Kevin Stefanski came out and said he was medically cleared. Mary Kay Cabot went on McAfee's show and talked about how he said all week long that he was going to play and then showed up on Sunday during warmups and said he just didn't feel right. And so he's not going to play with this bruised shoulder, but there's no structural damage. Um, I know someone else, maybe Rossini went on and said it's been two to six week injury, but we're in week three of it now. And there's no hard reporting on like exactly what's going on. And I think you can read between the lines. There's a bit of frustration among this Browns coaching staff about it. Yes. Yeah, Stefanski's pissed. Like it's, it's a bad situation. Uh, bad vibes except for that defense the defense and all guaranteed money vibes. yeah what what like a true what could go wrong trade <laughs> yeah. uh anything you want to say about these guys i mean josh downs is a bit of the new wandale robinson i really like josh downs we did better uh, and he's better he's 100 yeah. better and he is getting down the field a little bit more but mm -hmm. he is going to live along with michael Pittman, much closer to the line of scrimmage i will say man we need these next five weeks to like start happening for Brandon cooks. Like let's yeah. start it this week. I could see one deep shot to Brandon cooks or else man, that pick mm -hmm. and that contract was totally wasted. Yeah. Completely agree on Brandon cooks. It's a better and best ball type of profile. So that's why you have him buried here. Hasn't done anything with it. Quentin Johnston. This would be a good week for him to make a splash Post play post by rookie bump candidate. And I actually believe it uh, with him because he needed some development. He's actually in the starting lineup at this point and then josh reynolds tip my hat to you thanks thank you for your services but amon ross st brown back david montgomery going crazy jameson williams back in the lineup uh josh reynolds been a very efficient player but have him buried lower than i have ever wanted to did you know reynolds only ran 13 pass routes last week and he played yeah. even fewer snaps before the fourth quarter than marvin jones and Khalif raymond but we still got home with it so it worked yeah. out it's they the didn't need injuries. to do anything yeah, groin injury has been lingering. Why Why play Josh Reynolds with the lead? He's too important yeah. to the team. Too important. All right. Also important, Producer Weaves. You're the man. Shout him out in the comments if you made it this far. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday morning, hopefully with a guest for the show. And if I couldn't corral someone, I'll be doing it with myself. Uh, a Q&A for like 11.30 on. Yeah, weaves maybe, we'll get weaves. maybe we'll get Weaves on there. Um, Hayden's going to enjoy some time by the river. Uh, yes. Spitting sunflower seeds and doing God knows what. For the next 48 hours. So I don't look like this. Well, welcome to my world. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, again, we'll see you on Sunday morning. Up the velo. Talk to y'all soon. See ya.